Hey, I'm in the middle of, literally in the middle of reading, uh, Index, A History of by Dennis Dugan, which is a non-fiction account of the history of the Index. Um, and yeah, it's it's been a good book. I was, I was thinking about it today, I'm like halfway through, it's like, oh god, okay, it's another one of these things where there's a shit ton of information. Um, and there's been some books where that has been, where it just seems like it's a blizzard of factoids, um, which I have found somewhat disheartening because I can feel without a central idea that this is a blizzard of factoids. They will rush through my brain. I will find them interesting in the moment. And like um, junk food, they will be gone, pooped out again in no time. And... I will be none the wiser at the end. I think this book seems to be avoiding that particular um, issue for me because it does actually have a central thesis, which is the humble index. We sort of take it for granted as just something that's always been there. You know what? It hasn't been always been there. This is something that, um, you know, A, written language, uh, B, print, it, pr the printing press uh, and the uh, use of page numbers kind of turbocharges the idea of the index. You think about the index before when a manuscript was hand copied out, different size fonts, uh, different, different person transcribing can really mess up uh, what page something would be on. It is only when you get something like the fixed type where it's like, yeah, every every page nine will have a mention of this particular person on it uh, is a really powerful, really powerful. Um, it's also somewhat amusing that like all like all kind of technologies, um, there's definitely questions of like, oh, this will stop people from reading. Again, they're only going to use the index from now on, and it will destroy writing as we know it, and people will be dumber, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, and the, though it seems to be a lot of stuff of like, you're a, uh, especially it's because, I guess an index is for a non-fiction book, I would say, most particularly. Uh, it's uh, scholars or students who are time-pressed, who just want to quickly get to the bit of information they need from a book, yank, yoink it out. And continue and can continue on with their life, or as uh, some of the early um, makers of the index, uh, William Caxton in English says uh, it's meant as a retrospective tool. It's like you've read the entire book through, you've got the kind of the sum total of it in your head. Now you just need to go refer back to oh, wh where did they say that? Because I need to quote that or something. That's what an index is for, which I have to say, listening to it on audiobook, uh, is something that would be, is is useful. Like if I was doing a review and I wanted to find out, oh shit, where in this book did they talk about Orlando Furioso and in in the instance of a, of a, of a, uh, of an index in uh, Orlando Furioso by Ludvigo Aristo. And indeed, that does come up, where um, the English knight Alfonso uh, is given a fairy book and is able to use the index when he needs to get to the particular part that he, he needs to uh, speak a spell to, I think it's get out of the magician Atlante's bewitchment. Yes, so hey, Orlando Furioso shows up in the book. That is kind of cool. And, you know, I'm wondering, as I'm listening to this on audiobook, because I'm listening to his audiobook, uh... This isn't going to have an index, my the nonfiction book. I wonder if the nonfiction book itself has an index. Uh, the actual physical book or the ebook has an index. I guess I won't know because I'm listening to it free from my li library on audiobook. Oh, quick note about the audiobook guy. He starts talking about um, William F. Buckley Sr. or Jr. I can't remember if it's Sr. or Jr. Uh, and um, his tumultuous relationship with Norman Mailer. And they have this kind of interesting back and forth where uh, Buckley tr wanted to use one of uh, Norman Mailer's letters to him in his, in his book, but Mailer 
refuse. Um, and he gave Norman Mailer a copy of the book. And what he did is in the index where it says Lis uh, Norman Mailer, he put a little hi <laughs> in the index. Uh, you know, obviously making fun of the fact that uh, you're going to be such an egotist that the first thing you're going to do is flip to the index to find out all, all your own mentions in there, see if I, you know, quoted the letter or something like that, or just what did you say about me, kind of that sort of thing, which um, is kind of funny. But the audiobook narrator is English, at least he's reading an English accent, which is convincing. But when he gets into Norman Mailer and William F. Buckley, he's doing some kind of weird British uh, approximation of an American accent, which is just like, oh, I don't think you should have bothered. It's New York kind of accents, which seems, at least to this Canadian, kind of embarrassing that you would use those voices. I mean, yeah, yeah. For all the people who can do amazing accent work, um, there's still older or lesser tr technically trained people, maybe not technically trained to do their accents from amoeba hood. Um, like a lot of the young actors today seem to be, that's one of the skills that you need to have where you perfect your American accent. Uh, this guy does not have it <laughs> at, all, at all. So yeah, yeah. Um, and definitely going into the whole thing, uh, but definitely going into the whole thing about how uh, is this a bad technology that is going to mess up reading as we know it, which of course it will. I mean, uh, he quotes the example of, uh, of uh, Plato and stuff like that, probably one of the earliest recorded things where it was like, oh, this, this new technology of uh, writing is something that is going to fuck up human beings and change them in alterably in obviously bad, bad ways. We should keep the oral tradition. Um, you, you're, this is a forgetting. This is a, this isn't something that's going to help people improve their memories. It's just a remembrance thing. It's going to, it's a technology that takes the memory out of the human being, um, which I thought, yeah, oftentimes that's what's put up. And I believe we're going to be characterizing Google and the indexing of, of information on a computer as the next level of the, the index. We, you go from an index at the back of the book to Google with all its search functions as an index. Perhaps? Is it the same thing? I don't know. I'll have to listen to the arguments and see. All right. More videos later.